they are one of baseball's best pitching tandems. The Cardinals, Chris Carpenter and Matt Morris of St. Louis. Last night, Carpenter pitched a gym for his 16th win of the season. That was in game two. Tonight in game number three, it's Matt Morris, and he'll try to fillet the fish next on FSN Midwest. For the 16th consecutive home game, the Cardinals will draw over 40,000 fans here in downtown St. Louis. The first place Cardinals taking on the Florida Marlins in game number three. Here at Bush Stadium with my partner Albert Bosky, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Pitching, pitching, pitching has been the story of the season in 2005 for the Cardinals. And last night, Chris Carpenter, the first guy in the majors to pick up win number 16. Well, he was outstanding. He just as advertised, he went out there and dominated. Really made a statement to the National League and all of baseball that he wants to be a Cy Young award winner. But you can see Carpenter, Mulder, and Morris have combined for 39 wins, the most of any trio in the big leagues. And that's important if you get into postseason play. play you only need three starters. So. Let's break down what's happened here with Matt Morris. Last couple of starts have not been great, but when he's got that very good curveball, he is one of the best in the game. Yeah, he's got pitch on both sides of the plate. You saw the curveball down and away, then a fastball up and in. He's also got that cotter, but he needs to turn it around. He's gotten a lot of run support. But of lately, he's been getting some balls up. They've been hitting home runs. Need to stop that trend. For the Florida Marlins, it'll be Josh Beckett. He was a World Series hero a couple of seasons ago for the Florida Marlins. And Matt Morris, of course, going for St. Louis. That trio, by the way, your fourth key matchup tonight. We're in downtown St. Louis. We'll talk about the managers. Two guys that have been in this game a long time. Jack McKeon and Tony La Russa. Tony La Russa and Jack McKeon, a look at the managerial wins list, the active leaders. Jack McKeon at the bottom of that graphic, seventh overall. Tony La Russa, over 2,100. He's well on his way to the Hall of Fame. How much do you think uh, of some of the activities that took place last night will carry over in game number three tonight with some of those high and tight pitches on Edmonds and Rodriguez? I, I don't think they're really going to carry over because I don't think there was really any attempt. And Tony's point is, is okay, if you're trying to pitch inside, you better have better command and you better get the ball down. But uh, it was a relief pitcher. You know, I don't think it's going to carry over, but it really does make a statement. Now, I talked to several of the young hitters with the Cardinals right now, and they really appreciate that Tony stands behind them. When we come back, we're going to flash back and uh, one of the great moments here in St. Louis and Bush Stadium called by the late great Hall of Famer Jack Buck. You're going to hear from him when we come back. Bush Stadium, so many great moments. And let's take you back to 1993. Jack Buck with the call. Ozzie Smith in the middle of things. Cardinals need a triple play. Here's the pitch. Swing and a double play ball. Scooped up by Pena. Out at second, out at first. They've got the man hung up between second and third. It's a triple it. play. It's a triple play, and the inning is over. On FSN Midwest as the St. Louis Cardinals take to the field. And Juan Pierre will lead it off. The speedster of the Florida Marlins. Their lineup brought to you by Dodge. It will be Juan Pierre, Luis Castillo, and Jeff Conine. Here in the first for Florida. Miguel Cabrera, Paul LaDuca, Juan Encarnacion, Mike Lowell, Damian Easley, and Josh Beckett. Matt Morris on the mound for St. Louis and Matty Moe is trying to pick up win number 12 tonight Al. Well Matt Morris is trying to kind of stop a little bump in the road as he's trying two wins away from 100 in his career. You see his second best winning percentage in Cardinal history at Bush Stadium but got to stop the home run ball. Home run ball is caught up with him in his last two starts. His last two starts haven't been all that great. Not the Matt Morris that we saw at the beginning of the season. It was a loss at Los Angeles last Friday night. And then a 6-5 loss to Chicago. Around the Horn is brought to you by Auto Tire. Gall, Edmonds, and Rodriguez in the outfield. Nunez, very good third baseman. Eckstein at short. Gritzelonic and Pujols on the right. And uh, Mahoney is behind the plate. You had a chance to visit with Mr. Nunez on the pregame show. Uh, he's really a nice young man. And... You know, you really enjoy talking to him. We talked a little bit about playing shortstop because 
what was it just eight games at third base coming into this year and almost a decade in, in the, the major leagues and you know you you would see him or we saw him several times fill in as a utility player for the Pirates at second and short but uh, what a job he's done at third. Nunez filling in for the ailing Scott Rowland. First pitch to Pierre is a strike at 7-11. On a warm, muggy night once again here in St. Louis. We're expecting those temperatures to drop in the next couple of days and then again over the weekend. You know, they even say we might rain tomorrow night. Maybe even a little bit of rain. Or I'm no, sure it'll be happen. after the game. Oh, no. Our luck, Al, as you well know, is smack dab right in the middle of the game. Well, Matt Morris has had a lot of luck. His teammates have given him the most run support. That one is slapped over Nunez. He was playing in. Over to get it is Gall, and Pierre is thinking about two. A wide turn at first. He'll stop. And it's a leadoff single. Well, with his speed, Nunez is playing way in on the grass at third base. So he just slaps it right over his head. Well, he's a slap hitter and really should be fine every time he hits the ball in the air unless it's a line drive such as that. And of course Nunez won't move a muscle. He'll play the same spot with Castillo up. As they might elect to go for an early lead like last night and put down another sacrifice. It's a sacrifice by Castillo last night in the first inning. And then a sacrifice fly by Conan after a double by Pierre to start the ball game last night. It's 94 degrees here in St. Louis. I was talking to Castillo last night after the game and mentioned your leg is still bothering you. Missed considerable time with a quad pull, but the sacrifice he made last night, if he was had his normal running speed, he would have beaten that one out. And a double leadoff man in this lineup. 43 infield hits a year ago for Castillo. And if you go all the way back to 2000, it's 62 stolen bases, which at the time set the all-time franchise mark. We talked about last night. He broke Chucky Carr's record. Signed as a free agent back in 92 by the Marlins. Three-time All-Star is Castillo, but uh, they're trying to take the spring and life out of Pierre's legs, who has 35 steals to lead the National League, but caught 11 times. Jose Reyes has 34 of the Mets. Rafael Percal also in that top three. Percal of the Braves. We'll see him over the weekend as Pierre had a good jump there on Morris. Percal has 32. When Matt Morris is thrown over. He's also kind of held the ball one. Tries to sort of somewhat of a slide step, but Pierre still great speed. Gets a tremendous jump off the pitcher. Most stolen bases are off the pitcher, not off the catcher. Nothing into the count on Castillo. Switch hitter learned to hit from this side of the plate in the instructional league. They saw his speed and said, wait a minute, we got to get you slapping the ball and hitting down on it. And as you see there, it's almost like he's running out of the box before he even swings. Well, you know, you, just a, a rule of thumb is anytime you see a guy that can that can really run and he's a switch hitter, you know his natural side is is right. And he leads all national leaguers with a 429 average against left handed pitching his natural side. But this is where he does damage curveball up and in. And it's a ball and two strikes. What have you seen out of Matt Morris the last couple of starts that maybe we didn't see early on. Well he might have just hit a little hump in the road you know coming off the shoulder surgery having such a great first half but it's not finishing off his pitches don't have the life and the, the movement. Runners going again and it's hit into right field Rodriguez back and he won't get it. Pierre to second base and quickly gets back into Greg Juan Pierre had to hold up to make sure that that ball wasn't caught by John Rodriguez so it's a double by Castillo and the first two have reached here in the first against Matt Morris. All things considered the Cardinals catch a break. As Pierre studying as soon as that leg comes up he takes off. And the breaking ball. See, the breaking ball is just more of a roller. It's not as sharp, and it's kind of up there in the middle of the zone. And these hitters are starting to make the adjustment. Here's the break for the Cardinals, as Rodriguez tried to deke Juan Pierre and did a good job of it. That kept him from scoring on the double. RBI opportunity for Jeff Conine. Talk about a hump in the road, and really the only 
problem that Chris Carpenter had last night was in the first inning, and then after that, he was fantastic. Well, you can really just say it was the one pitch, the double by Pierre, because then a sacrifice gets him a third, a sacrifice fly brings him in, so. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Make it 0 2 with Cabrera on deck. Second time that he's had a Marlins hitter 0 2 here in the first. It's kind of a in and out Van Morris and these hitters will kind of tell you how they feel about a guy just the way he stands on the mound. We talk about mound presence. Here's the 0 2 pitch. Pretty good one there by Morris and it was spoiled by Conai. Morris is not working very that's, quickly that's here in the what first. I'm saying that's what I'm saying when you win Matty is really throwing the ball well you know he's got a big smile on his face because he knows he's having fun he's dominating hitters it still was a very warm night maybe trying to slow things down you know he doesn't have that good feel about himself that ball was just up enough to be an effective pitch he gets that down a couple inches and you might have seen a three run home run. Conine is hitting 292, two home runs and 14 RBIs, filling in for Carlos Delgado, missing another game tonight. That was a good pitch there and on the hands. It's one and two. Yeah. Conine got to 0 2, and Matt made a pretty good pitch to him down away. And he just got a piece of it to foul it off. And then he got away with a hanger, and there was a good pitch up and in. Well, that set up a good breaking ball or cut her away. Fouled again. And making him, Morris work here in the first. And reaching on the curveball. Heading the count, you can see opponents 188 behind 388. Carlos Delgado, by the way, as Jeff Conine is filling in, Al is missing now his, his sixth straight game. Conine's a great, you know, great uh, substitute. Veteran player, very well thought of in South Florida. Royal Farmhand came to the Marlins through the expansion draft. Second stint with them after time with Baltimore. But there's Delgado rolled next to him. I told Delgado, I said, just a couple more days, then you can get healthy. Just not here in St. Louis as Pujols thought about going home, but it's going to be an RBI for Conine. So a single, then a double, and a little sliver by Conine to play his 15th RBI. This is our pitch-by-pitch -pitch feature. Well, that's where the 0-2 pitch, the third pitch, that he made a good pitch. There's the hanger that was just high enough to get away. Then another breaking ball got him reaching, but he puts it in play to the right side, and that'll score a guy with like Pierre any time. And Castillo moves up a spot, too. Pitch by pitch brought to you by your Mid-America Chevrolet dealers. Now Cabrera. Two hits in the inning. One to nothing Florida. Watch out for this guys. The infield is charging in. A curveball is strike one. Well that tells you right now that Tony La Russa feels that this is going to be a very, very low scoring game. Cabrera had his career high 13 game hitting streak stopped last night. But he has been on a tear since the All-Star break. All-Star this year. Second time in his brief Major League career. He's only 22. Breaks his bat and it's over Eckstein. Floats out there for an RBI hit. Third base hit for the Marlins. So the infield in at this time it backfires for Tony La Russa and the Cardinals. Would have been a tough play out for him to make even if he's at his normal spot. But with him charging in you're going to get a good look at it here. He had no chance. No chance and you know very surprised but. I told you just a second ago, it's just an indication. Tony thinks how runs are going to be at a premium. But you don't often see Tony or any manager bring in the infield in in the first inning. Now it's Paul LaDuca, the catcher for the Marlins. Two to nothing, Florida. One of the most ridiculous ones I've ever seen is when managers in Colorado bring their team in in the first inning. You know there's going to be a lot of runs scored there. Well, and you're going to get a lot of flares. Already there's more base hits in between the infield and outfield than any other state. That one is lined into right field and it drops for a hit in front of Rodriguez. Not the kind of start that Matt Morris wanted this evening. A base hit by Leduc. It's first and second. And still only one out. And already that's the fourth hit for Florida here in the first. 
out. Some of them are not bad pitches, but you know, it's, it's everything is pretty much in the middle of the plate. Breaking ball doesn't have the sharpness to it that has it was a sinker, but you know, it's, it's a little bit too much elevation and a little bit too much centered in the plate. Nine year major league career for Matt Morris, and he has never, ever lost three consecutive starts. He's got a chance tonight. Kurt Wall misses outside to Incarnacion. He stopped a two game losing streak earlier this year, but. There you see the in game box score for Florida. Four hits in the inning. It's pretty impressive. Nine years and has yet to lose three consecutive. Especially here when he wins two out of every three games. So that chance to stop it again. That is pulled foul. Incarnacion batting 299 overall, but he leads the Marlins with an average that is near 400 with runners in scoring position, and he's got first and second. 15 home runs, 65 RBIs to go along with that lofty batting average. Morris could use a double play, and this one is hit high in the air, pretty well hit out to deep left field. Ball is back on the track, and he makes the catch. He settles and throws. And Cabrera does not tag up from second to third. If that ball drops, he's going to score anyway. And for whatever reason, he does not tag up from second to third. That's a base running mistake. Jeff Cox, the third base coach, and you don't see him really yelling at him to get back. But you're absolutely right, Dan. Go back, you know, get close to the bag, get back, because if it goes out, obviously he's going to score. And because of the depth out there, he was going to at least advance if it was caught. Now it's Mike Lowell who hit 322 in the month of July and has picked it up as of late. Had a very good first game of this series. He's one for six though in the series, but defensively he's been very good. Those are atypical Lowell numbers when you see 243 and only six home runs and 48 RBIs. And the one hit he has in this series is a home run. It's a two run shot off of Jason Marquis. It's five for 12 against Matt Morris. That one is hit out to left. Gall is back on the track with room and makes the catch. Marlins strand two, but they plate two. They're half of the first. Beckett coming up. St. Louis, Bush Stadium. The Cardinals lineup brought to you by Dodge. David Eckstein, John Rodriguez, and Albert Pujols in the Cardinals half of the first. Then Edmonds, the cleanup man, John Gall, Mark Rizalonic, Abraham Nunez, Mike Mahoney, and Matt Morris. Very good pitcher on the mound. He's in the top ten at ERA. One of their young guns, Josh Beckett. His number is brought to you by Rico. Uh, he is really an outstanding young pitcher, and yet with that victory his last time out he won a career high 10 games but he's made his name in postseason play postseason play a couple of seasons ago against the Yankees and he was outstanding and really outstanding in that entire playoff run there's a look at Damian Easley with Alex Gonzalez one of the World Series heroes from a couple of years ago on the bench tonight he'll play shortstop Cabrera's in left then Juan Pierre in center Encarnacion is in right Lowell and Easley on the left side of the infield Castillo Conine on the right side and Paul LaDuca is behind the plate. We talked about Mike Lowell, the third baseman of the Marlins, the top fielding percentage in the history of baseball at third base. That's how good he is. As David Eckstein takes a strike at 86 miles an hour. David's batting 265, three home runs and 32 RBIs. Oh, for his last 11 and hitless and eight at bats in this series. Against the Dodgers and facing another Southern California team. Of course, he was from Anaheim. He was 14 for 28. Had a good weekend set against Los Angeles, but like you said, in a bit of a funk again. 0 for his last eight against the Marlins in this series. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Fastball at the knees. Josh Beckett is already in his fifth major league season. He's out of Spring, Texas, drafted number one out of. Uh, Spring Texas High School 6 5 222 pounder 1 2 pitch and Josh waited all summer before signing with the Marlins late in August of 1999 
He got a four-year, $7 million contract. And his signing bonus, Al, was nearly three and a half million bucks as Eckstein reaches and hits it out to Cabrera in left. And at that time, he was only the third high school player to land a major league contract. He had Todd Van Poppel. Oakland drafted him back in 1990, you might remember. And another guy named Alex Rodriguez was Seattle back in 93. And we were in uh, in Florida when he came in for the first time to visit the Marlins. And I was sitting with John Henry, the owner of the Marlins at that time. And John had told me, he said, yeah, the kid came in. He said, I, not that I'll be in the big leagues in four years. He said, I'll be a National League All-Star in four years. Rodriguez on the first pitch. Easily a wide throw. Rodriguez is safe at first. He didn't get on top of the throw. Kind of slung it over there. And that drew the first baseman, Conine, off the bag. So an air, E6 on Easley. Kind of nice, easy play. But there's what you're talking about, that sling underhand. When you do that, the ball's going to sail, or it can sail. Straight over the top, it's going to be on a direct line. His seventh air, 63rd air of the year, and you bring up Alba Pools, potential tie and run. Maybe that's how the Cardinals get right back in it. One out, runner at first. Here's Pools batting 342 on the year. Good breaking ball for strike one. Albert, four for 11, home run against Beckett. Edmonds, even better numbers hitting behind him, so let's hope the Cardinals can answer with some runs here in the first. Edmonds on deck. Beckett, a long look. Time is called. And for youngsters, Al, they should throw the ball to the pitcher on the mound. Absolutely. When you start going forward and you try and stop, Man, that's a good way to throw your shoulder out, do some kind of injury. So go ahead and throw the ball. Watch out. Pull those ass for time, granted late. And you see him kind of going out there and jumping around a little bit. Just go ahead and throw the ball. You just don't have to throw it hard. It's a free top. Curve ball in the dirt. One ball, one strike. As Pujols has been a model of consistency. Look at this. 329, 314, 359, the year that he won his lone batting championship, 331 and 342. The power numbers have been outstanding. His best year, 46 a season ago with the home runs. Major League leader in runs scored. Here comes a 1 1 pitch. That's two strikes, strikes as uh, our home plate umpire, Bruce Dreckman, thought that was strike three. He was practicing. Come on. He was practicing. Nice going, Bruce. When I went to go pay a visit to the umpires today. There, he never messed up in the card game that way. He counted his cards perfectly. He must have been winning. They were playing Euchre. Here's a one-two. Pujols, vicious rip. And fouled it straight back as we get another look at Bruce Dreckman. Pools knows the count. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good pitch, but Albert goes, come on now. It's only two strikes. In this league, we play with three. Embarrassing moment, but he will recover. Been around for a long time. One, two delivery. Umpires were at the scene of an interesting play. A couple interesting plays last night in particular. The play with the bases loaded and Chris Carpenter at the plate with the squeeze on. Maybe after Albert's at bat or a little later in the game, we'll get into it. And I'll tell you what, Doug Eddings, the third base umpire who made the, the call last night, he admitted to me he got the penalty phase of it wrong. Bounced in the dirt again. Full count on Pujols. Let's we'll see if they want to start the runner, John Rodriguez, on three and two. It's been like uh, Beckett is trying to overthrow that curveball with Pujols at the plate. Well, the one thing he's doing, though, which is okay, that if you're going to miss, miss down. There goes Rodriguez. The 3 2 is fouled back. So John back to first after he reached on the air by easily and we'll have another 3-2 pitch from Josh Beckett. He was 
signed by Bob Lori, the Marlins area scout for Texas. Followed Beckett for three years. He said he was the best high school pitcher he'd ever seen. A check on Rodriguez. Cardinals trailing here in their half of the first by the score of two to nothing. It's a 3 2 count on pool holes with one out. Good matchup here with these two young stars. 3 2 pitch. Pool holes fights it off, but hits it out to second. And back to first, Rodriguez can't get there, and they double him up. Castillo thought about letting it drop after watching that the Pujols thought it was going to be caught and taken for granted. And then he gets caught up in the dirt out there, trying to get back. Heads up play by Castillo. 2 nothing Florida after one. First game, Marlins lead the Cardinals 2 to nothing. Last night, home plate umpire Doug Eddings had an interesting play. The bases were loaded with pitcher Chris Carpenter at the plate. And there was going to be a super suicide squeeze. And, you know, pitchers are supposed to instruct it when you see that squeeze to throw inside. Here's Damian Easley. Well, let's see. Ron Valone, who got in some throwing contests. You see the squeeze is on. They throw like this. Now they call interference. But you watch right there. It really doesn't matter if it's intentional or not. And it really wasn't intentional in the fact of, of, uh, Carpenter and who really screwed up the play and Doug Eddings told him was Laduca. Why was he going to the left instead of going right to home plate? But he called interference, but he he messed up the penalty phase of it. Another high fly ball out to left. Will it stay in the ballpark? And it's three to nothing, Florida. A home run allowed by Matt Morris. Damian Easley goes deep for the ninth time this season. As John Gall watched it sail away into the bullpen. I can see it right now. We've had a lot of fly balls, but look at that lazy, tumbling, breaking ball. Letter high, and this one just carries out. So that is the 12th home run of the year, but six home runs in his last three plus starts. So Morris will try to regroup. It's 3-0 Florida. Here's Josh Beckett. He takes a fastball outside. I don't know if you remember. I, I said at one point when the umpires were huddling last night, one of them I could read his lips. He said, are you sure about that? He said, you're right about that. You're sure. When they were making that call, he said, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Well, after the game, they went and read the rule book again. In every situation of interference, Nunez will retire Josh Beckett just trotting down the first base line for our number one. That would have been the correct call to call the batter out. But in a squeeze play, you go for the most severe penalty to the offensive team. And in that case, Carpenter would have stayed as the hitter and the runner at third would be called out. The interesting thing is if, and remember Jack McKeon was saying, is that it? He was lobbying for a double play. But if he would have protested the game, it might have been very interesting, mm. and they may have won that protest. Tony La Russa, I think, maybe, and he admitted to me he wasn't totally sure on it. He didn't think he got the interference call correct at all. But I asked, Doug Enning said, it, it really didn't have anything to do whether it was intentional or not. But, you know, because at first when I saw it, I said, well, he stayed in the batter's box. If you look at it later, in an effort to try and get out of the way, he kind of throws his leg back into Laduca, but that was only because Laduca took the longest route around him instead of the most direct approach to the to home plate. He should have been in front of him, which he would have had a clear space to do so. Here's a 1-1 pitch to Pierre. He rips it into right. John Rodriguez is there. Two outs. Pierre is one for two, and it brings in the second baseman, Castillo. There's a look at Paul Laduca who did take that odd way to get back to the home plate area and, and try to apply the tag on Gritzelonic. He was going around Carpenter instead of the direct route right back to uh, home plate. Yeah, and, and, he, and Eddings told me, he said, he said, Paul, you messed up the play. Why didn't you do it that way? That's baseball, though, isn't it? Yeah. You find out something every time you come to the ballpark, a little different. 
Even the major league umpires have to confer after. Very a game. rarely, very rarely do they not have a rule interpretation correct. But at least, you know, he admitted it to me that he made a mistake, and you know, we all learn from that. Two balls and no strikes on Castillo. It was a costly middle error by Matt Morris in his last start Friday night against the Dodgers with a runner at third. And he looked back the runner had him dead to rights hung up between home plate and third base and already 37 pitches thrown and instead he went to first and that runner would froze essentially. Well, remember halfway home but was already home now it was yeah. easy. Yeah and that was and that broke a 5 5 tie late in the ball game and then he threw one pitch to his nemesis Jeff Kent for an RBI double and last two runs two run victory. Pujols takes it himself a home run allowed by Morris to easily Marlins on top by three. Take a look at last night ninth inning Chris Carpenter Allen boy was he ready to go. He was ready to go a lot sooner than any of his teammates. All he has is Diaz is catching him and now you just see his teammates start to get out there but he wanted to end it and we, we didn't talk enough about Albert's pick at first base on that play because he took a tough one out of the out of the dirt to get the final out for Carpenter's 16th victory most in the major leagues. Here's Edmonds against Beckett on the first pitch hits it into right center field Cardinals first hit tonight Edmonds around first he's thinking too they're going to test Pierre he doesn't have that great of an arm and the scout report shows it right there as Edmonds has a leadoff double. I mean he can pick him up and put him down with the best of them but his arm is one of the worst out there in center field. Yep, it really is and good hitting by Edmonds ball up and he is now seven for twelve off of Beckett in a home run and you test Juan Pierre he really wasn't even running that hard he picked it up a little bit and slides head first to assure that the double but you know Jim Edmonds is starting to really hit the ball with with regularity. Get into one of those hot streaks, and now it's John Gall playing left field for the second consecutive night here at Bush Stadium. Gall a big hit in the Cardinals' victory last night as he made his major league debut with a double in his first at bat against Woody Williams. Of course, Larry Walker still on that bench and on the DL. There's two RBIs of his career last night. Game winners. Well, the Cardinals trying to get on the board and you know for Gall you'd like to see him pick up a base hit but just hit it to the opposite side and try to advance the runner and get a run up on the board against Josh Beckett. Asked John Gall about last night where the pitchers Ron Valone in particular coming up and in and a couple of Cardinal left handed batters and he said what do you think about Tony's reaction he said I loved it loved how he's out there protecting the hitters. One ball one strike on Gall and now time is called. Going back to Chris Carpenter he now has five complete games on the season now an eight game winning streak and in his last nine starts an ERA of point eight three. And you spell Cy Young. Major League Baseball high 16th win last night. And how about this he's had 50 career starts wearing that uniform here in St. Louis. And his record is 31 and 9. That's the best ever by a Cardinals pitcher through their first 50 starts in the history of this organization. And of course, I say Cy Young, he is the leading candidate, but he'll have to continue. Still a ways to go. 2 1 pitch. The feel good story for the national media is a guy that is vibrant, vivacious, is. is the starter for Florida which was Dontrell Willis he's a story but the other one is Roger Clemens and by seasons in Roger's going to be 43 years of age. Now, Dontrell really has had a couple. He's had three. So so outings his last four and he, he wasn't his normal self because he was in survival mode. Yep. 2 2 pitch ball a swing and a miss. 91 miles an hour from Beckett he blew it by him. So he can't advance the runner from second and now it brings in Mark Ritzelonic. First strikeout of the night for Josh Beckett. Be careful trying to hit fastballs up in the zone. And what you're going to do with a guy that throws as hard as Beckett mid 90s is you're going to end up swinging through it or popping it up. We talked about the individual success of Carpenter. Well, the starters have combined to have 58 wins this season. 
next would be the Chicago White Sox. They own the best record in baseball. The starters have 52 wins. John Garland and Mark Burley have been terrific for them. And Houston now at 48. With Pettit bouncing back and having a good season for the Astros. We've talked about Clemens and Roy Oswald. Here's an 0 1 pitch. A ball and a strike. Cardinals have been out hit 5 1 in this game and trail 3 0. Zelonic has a six game hitting streak. He's batted 333 since the All Star break. Long look by Beckett, the 1 1 pitch. 2 and 1. Matt Beckett enjoys hunting and fishing during his spare time, and in 2002, he was the all around Muy Grande, Muy Grande winner, an award given to the largest deer shot in Texas during the hunting season. 245 pound live weight. Now he's as country as country gets, and he says, I have no idea why I get these blisters because I'm the guy that chops wood. I'm always handling different things with my hands. I'm working on my car. I don't get it. That's a base hit into right field. Cardinals get on the board. Mark Ritzelonic with the RBI, his 39th of the season. Edmund trots in, and it's 3-1 Marlins. Good piece of hitting there by the Cardinals' second baseman, Mark Ritzelonic. Well, you know, it's 39th RBI, and just, I just told you that fastball that's up, you know, it's hard to hit, hard to get on top of. 97 miles an hour, and look at that. Somehow, some way, with that swing, it produced a line drive, and now he finally located it and starts running. Now you talk about not sure and where you look like the bill of his cap was over his eyes, and somehow he got on top of it with that uppercut, and so I guess he was chopping wood at the top of the swing. I guess so. Abraham Nunez takes the ball. Did he 313 on the year? Beckett has had those problems with the blisters. Kind of stint on the disabled list issue. How about that nasty blister that had developed on the thumb of Derek Lowe? I don't know if you had a chance to see that over the weekend. It was disgusting. I don't know how he's pitching. I don't study men's anatomy as closely as you, apparently. So you're going to tell me about Flores' blister, too? Oh, I'm not. I, I'm, hey, that's Tom. He's shooting for us. He, I just think he's a nice left-handed reliever. Oh. Chance at a double play here. Nunez save it first. Party Singular Wireless and the Post Dispatch are proud to sponsor the All Bush Stadium team balloting. Here's your chance to vote for your favorite Cardinals player at each position who have played at the current Bush Stadium. To vote, log on to stlcardinals.com and look for the ballot in the post dispatch or text message. Vote to 7267 on your singular wireless phone. Two outs. Here's Mike Mahoney. See, I was doing my homework watching the game, making sure I was up to date on what's going on. I'm not sure what you were doing. I guess you must have been playing golf. Were you seeing that Saturday? It was Saturday. Yeah, well, I was flying home. Okay. I just, I, I got I to gotta check these things out. Old people don't take red eyes. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes on Mahoney and Matt Morris on deck. It's a 3-1 ball game. And stop in Chicago. Right. <laughs> I told Joel all about that. <laughs> oh, that would be a welcome sight, wouldn't it? Ball landing in Big Mac land. Ricky Weeks has hit one there this yeah. year. A little bit to the right of it, even further. It's a broken bat. Makes me think of LeVon Hernandez, who used to wear number 61. And then when Beckett got to Florida, he took 61. I was thinking about that because it was Hernandez who gave up the home run to McGuire that hit off the post dispatch sign out in center field. I was told some of the scouts were talking about Cabrera's batting, but right up in there is where McGuire hit that home run off LeVon Hernandez. That is a long way, folks. I miss seeing that's the Band-Aid up there. That's a lot further than uh, 
you know Big Mac land or anything else but they were talking about Cabrera's batting practice tonight. I brought up weeks. That's yeah, it to short force play at second. Cardinals get on the board with an RBI from Chris Alonick his 39th. 3-1 Marlins as we head to the third. Top of the third here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Game number three of this four-game set. How about that picture? Manager Alvin Dark is fired and outfielder Ken the Hawk Harrelson is released by A's owner Charlie Finley due to reports of rowdy behavior on the team flight. This is back in 1967. Now check out the belt buckle. Bush. How about that, buddy? Hey, that's a that's styling that's right the there. That's the classiest thing the man's ever had on. The Hawk, <laughs> one of our, you know what he's doing up there? One of our great photographers here, and he's taking a picture. I've seen a neat shot of Bush Stadium. You're very astute, Al. He's a photographer taking yep. a picture. I just, that's what you get the big bucks for. <laughs> but I've seen that a neat picture circulating from, that is taking from behind, behind home plate or maybe even from on the first base side on opening day with a full crowd and looking at the whole stadium packed. Our buddy Don Marquez has a great print that's out now. Yeah, the final one, turn out the lights. The last one here, turn out the lights. I'm having it framed right now. There's Jeff Conine. See, now, that's a base hit by Conine. You had one of the great lines of the year. And the fact that I brought up that Ken the Hawk Harrelson has gone from being a guy that was a player to a broadcaster to front office then back to broadcasting and you said it's amazing even broadcasters can go from being broadcasters to the president's the United States and running for governor. Yeah. Our buddy Ken Wilson has those. Oh that, right right right. Get me back in the hockey move. You got it. Here's Cabrera. And he looks at a strike. And the Hawk had some interesting moves, too. Carlton Fisk got and left. Hall of Fame catcher. Cabrera is three for nine in the series. That's a double play. Thank you very much. Well, how quick did Grizzlani get rid of that ball? And he had to guide it over the runner too. A little touch on that throw. Right over the uh, defensive back, Al. That's Isaac Bruce down there. Well, you see it in action right here. Just a bullet. And he also got screened by the second base umpire. And thrown over the head of Conine. By the way, do you know that I beat Marty Hogan and Jeff Conine today? Don't tell me it was handball or racquetball. He told me I, I, I told him I was going to say it you know, and he said you can't say it's racquetball or handball but so I won't say it. I won't say it. I just said it. I won't say it. He said you could say anything but don't say it was in those two. Jeff Conine a world class. He's ranked at one point in his career at handball and racquetball. Sorry Marty how you got linked into this fictitious story. Third base coach of the uh, Brewers, Rich Donnelly. We talked about him last night. He's a terrific player, too. Actually, one of his partners here in St. Louis, one of our guards, and is recognized as a class player. Right down the middle for a strike, and it's three and one on Laduca. It's a struggle right now for Matt Morris as he's already surrendered six hits, but he's a battler. He'll try and find something and some way to keep this game close. And it's a, a two out walk to Paul Laduca, second time he's been on base. You know, Matt is, surrenders the fewest walks per nine innings in the National League, a little over one, 1.3. But he is really struggling trying to find something here today. Look at that game time Budweiser sign out right center. Chris Carpenter with 16 wins. Then you have John Garland at 15. Oswalt and Willis with 14. The leaderboard out there. 
And Carpenter's trying to figure out the zone. He's shaking his head. Garland failed to win his 16th game last night, as Carpenter did. And then everybody talks about uh, Clemens. Clemens won his 10th game last night. He's something else, isn't he? He's doing stuff you're not supposed to be able to do. It's amazing. I was watching a portion of that game. I mean, he's still getting it up there 93, 94 miles an hour still. And knows how to pitch with less stuff. 2 0 pitch to Encarnacion is lined into center field. So a walk and a single after. The double play off the bat of Cabrera. Seven hits already for Florida. We're talking about Roger Clemens. He has a chance for the Cy Young. And one of the reasons why is look at the ERA. 1.45 for Clemens. Carpenter at 2.26. Oswald 2.40. As we saw last year, Houston is not a team that you want to see in postseason play with their great starting pitching. And yet, right after the break, the Cardinals swept them here at Bush, beating Pettit, Oswald, and Clemens. One of the biggest home runs of the season by Albert Pujols on that Friday night in the bottom of the 13th. One of the few curveballs that's fooled a hitter, but Matt didn't get the call. He's out there shaking his head. He's trying to figure out the zone. 1 0 pitch outside, and it's 2 0 on low. Hope you enjoyed our visit with Mike Lowell yesterday as he considers his father one of the true heroes in his life defected from Cuba pitched for the national team in Puerto Rico that beat Cuba his dad beat Cuba and he would not shake Fidel Castro's hand down to shallow left field and it is a catch by David Eckstein what a catch. What a play by David Eckstein with his back to the infield. Push for game three of this four game set. Dan McLaughlin, Al Roboski with you. Wasn't quite Ozzy jumping uh, over Kurt Ford with his back to the infield, but this is a good play by David Eckstein. Well, it's a great play, but Jim Edmonds should have taken charge. I mean, you see him pull up there and try and help out his, his shortstop and. Since the play was made, you, you're glad you see a highlight play made, but it would have been much easier for Jim to catch it. Bell tie. Marlins with a lead of three to one. Here in the Cardinals half of the third. A one pitch to Matt Morris. And we're going to see David Eckstein and John Rodriguez tomorrow during our pregame show. You'll see an interview with Al with the Todd Jones, the closer. Of the Florida Marlins back in that closers role. Fun guy to be around, too. Are you kidding me? He's the closer? I thought he was with the monkeys. There he is. Living proof right there. He writes that article for the Sporting News, the closer. Does a nice job with that. And he was a very good closer for many years in the in the league. And then he was really a setup guy. Bounced around two different clubs. And as I see number 22, I, I want to pass along our condolences to Mike Matheny's family as Mike's on bereavement leave and his grandfather passed away. He's having a good year with the Giants. San Francisco gets word that Barry Bonds, as he tells MLB.com, he will not be back this season. And that was a team that was you know, really geared up to try to make a run at it this year with older players Mike Matheny being one of them Omar Vizquel Barry Bonds he just put uh, Grissom on waivers subtracting some of the older players picked up Randy Wynn at the trade deadline I'm sure they'd like to get a little earlier news and notice from Barry Bonds as he did it right after the trade deadline he won't come back that's lined into the seats. Looks like everybody's all right down there. It's one and two on David. Yeah, everybody's all right except for the guy that hit. Thank you. 
Everybody's all right. <laughs> Look out, because they're looking for the ball. If we get another one on top of the head. When we talk about David Eckstein and the fact that he is a tough two strike hitter, one of the best in this spot. And he credits choking up on the bat as a reason why. He chokes up anyway, but then with two strikes, even more so. And it's another line shot into the seats. He's also the major league leader in making contact. Coming into the ballgame tonight, he's missed just 31 times in 740 swings. Third toughest player in the majors to strike out. Rex Hudler, the color analyst and former Cardinal of the Anaheim Angels, is talking about David Eckstein. He said that the fans here in St. Louis, they love the hustle, they love hard play, they would fall in love with David Eckstein. And in many ways, these Cardinal fans have appreciated the way that he goes about his business. Two and two. Good at bat here. Get there long enough. Hopefully, he'll get a mistake and can do something with it. Change up. 2 2. Eckstein down the left field line. Pretty well hit. Cabrera on the move. It's gone. It's a home run. Home run for David Eckstein. His fourth of the season. Great at bat there by Eckstein. The little guy just battles. And it's 3 to 2, Marlins. Choking up right there. He got a high changeup and just a high towering fly ball. Just had enough to go off the McBride and Sons home building. Muscles it out of here. He's been on a home run tear of late. Well, he shook off the curveball, the fastball, then went with the changeup. Rodriguez grounds to second base. And that's the second out here in the Cardinals half of the third. And Beckett got burned on the changeup. Gather a group of friends, family, or co-workers and come on down for a group outing at Bush Stadium. Groups of 25 or more receive great ticket discounts, scoreboard recognition, group posters, and much more. We have several group half-price nights remaining in 2005. 26 dates remaining here at Bush Stadium. The number to call 425-0600 or always online at sdlcardinals.com. Who holds on the first pitch? Pops it up. Get out of play. It's near the dugout and it's going to be caught by Laduca. Nicely done. And Albert is over two. David Eckstein with his fourth home run of the season. His 33rd RBI down the left field line has cut the lead to 3-2. As we move to the fourth. Paul Laduca getting some help from Dontrell Willis and a pop-up behind home plate not as pronounced tonight as far as needing help but still got it from both his third baseman Lowell and the pitchers that was near the uh, the dugout and our buddy Tony Angeles our cameraman down there he gets the best look at this right into his camera Tony can't measure up with what we've seen from Kenny Roberts it's out to deep right Rodriguez makes the catch Easily hit a home run the first time to left and made a, an offer to right. And they have uh, pretty good success when Damon easily hits a home run. They're seven and one. Tony Angeles saw Rodriguez kind of get turned around a little bit, but makes the play. There you go. What do you think, Tony? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Tony. Like I said, though, none of these guys can measure up to the one and only, the great Ken Roberts out there in center. You know how many kids now, after we read that email, are going up to Ken Roberts and asking for autographs? And please hand me a baseball. Well, you know what? He's, he's got, he got the night off to answer all of his fan mail. Yeah. Sometimes that happens, Al. Yeah, sometimes. And it happens frequently to Jasper when we're down in. Miami all the time all the time sometimes Jasper even sees the game <laughs> Beckett offered at it 
A strikeout for Matt Morris, his first of the night. This fall, the NFL returns to Fox for another season of the game's biggest names, most story teams, and unforgettable moments. Fox NFL Sunday returns this September. You guessed it, it's only on Fox. Joe Buck with a two-man booth this year. Yeah. With Troy Aikman. You know, I think he's having his final days of football meetings up in New York. Curveball and a strike to Juan Pierre. He is fly to right, singled and scored back in the first. Let's hope Matt has a one, two, three inning. It's been a, a grind for him, but he's a battler. You know he's going to go out there and make the most of it. it looks like he's starting. The one thing it seemed like is his breaking ball was kind of rolling, but a lot of the pitchers were kind of in the middle of the plate. That last one was a good cutter in on the hands. So maybe he can start. Zero and keep the ball down and hit the corners. Third ball just missed outside. But see, even that still has that little roll and hump in it. Starting it out way too hot. Started down lower and then have it bite down to the ground. He got him. Strike out of Pierre. So two strikeouts in this game, back to back in this inning, midway through the fourth, and the Cardinals will have Edmonds, Dahl, and Ritzelotti coming up. It's 3 2. Cardinals on top. Turn to the Affleck trivia question tonight here in St. Louis and Bush Stadium, 3 2 Florida, who is currently the oldest player in the major leagues. The oldest player in the major leagues. That's the new ballpark going up. Light fixtures out there put up a couple of weeks ago. Here's Jim Edmonds. You know this answer. Well, one of the guys that uh, you think about with the Florida Marlins in their inaugural season, Charlie Huff. Yeah, Charlie was. Guy that could play advanced age with his knuckleball. He was probably around 42, got, got the first win, but he's not the answer because he's one, he's not playing. Correctly. That's right. One ball, one strike on Edmonds. And we don't know, but this guy may be truly older than Charlie Huff. We will see him over the weekend. He might be 62, maybe 63 years old. He's kept himself in pretty good shape. Yeah, well, there's some, you know, some people, there was a rumor that they saw him going down to. Uh, Social Security office filling out the papers. Strike on the inside corner, two and two. But the answer is he is in good shape and he still can hit. Still can hit, but a pretty decent number so far. Email from Scotland where it's 2 a.m. And this is from Michael. He says, I am that craziest fan. Really? I should be with Alan Cornbread tomorrow. <laughs> well, it'll be a decent hour for him. Yep. 8.30 in the morning might be early for me. I got, I got a surprise for Cornbread. Strike out of Edmonds. Tailing fastball. Didn't like it one bit. I think when he sees the replay, though, he'll see that from here it looked like it was a very good pitch. where it crosses the plate get a better uh, the height of it right at the knees third strikeout for Josh Beckett here's John Gall he struck out his first time up look at that curveball for strike one All pulls it foul. We get a lot of emails about who's going to tear down the numbers out in right field. Last night it was Scott Rowland. Tonight it's number 26. We wish we knew. Don't we? I mean, I know in fairness to the Cardinals, is, is they've had a few individuals that were scheduled to do it and a couple times. I know one gentleman was, was the oldest. I don't know if it's living 
player at the time or the oldest Cardinal ever and he was here but we had that rain delay and and it just was too strenuous for a man in his late 90s and he had to go back to the hotel so they had to come up with a substitute it happened to be Colonel Todd Robbins of Scott Air Force Base just in case you want to know but tomorrow that's tomorrow it's number 25 a lot of people wondering is it going to be Mark McGuire I'll guarantee it it will not be. it will not be apparently he is on vacation is what he told the Cardinals so we will not see Mark McGuire apparently here at the ballpark 2 2 pitch Mr. Stiles was supposed to do it one time and his grandson took it down because he unfortunately was in the hospital so one of those situations and some of the players because of other conflicts some of the choices that the fans would have loved uh, haven't been available. This one has popped up. Foul territory for Conai. Two outs. We will see this gentleman this weekend in front of our Affleck trivia question tonight. We'll see the Atlanta Braves come to town on Friday night. Who's the oldest player in the majors right now Julio Franco at 46 years of age and of course the Braves lead the National League East once again at 62 and 45 despite all the injuries and the young players that they have called up and they lead the Nationals by five and a half Atlanta got really hot Washington went into a tailspin and the Braves lead it by five and a half as Bobby Wine the Braves advanced scout the other day about some of the young players and he said I never knew that we had this much talent in the minor leagues it's been amazing thought the cover was bare they got four local kits four local products that are on the big league roster from the Georgia suburbs Chipper Jones was hurt last night in Pittsburgh the third baseman he was diving for a ball to his left and hurt his rotator cuff I saw that probably be one of those injuries that just last through the weekend hopefully of course I don't mean that being a baseball fan you want to see the premier players like Chipper Jones. That'll be a good series and there is standing room tickets only remain 2 one pitch. Is pop fouling out of play. Yeah, and that's where that prime seat club has got to come in. Green seats are available. Sometimes the owners seats become available as well. See the ticket holders that for whatever reason you know turn their tickets into the Cardinals and you can pick up some some of the best seats available through that prime ticket club. Here's a 2 2. Bertolonic has an RBI base hit. It was back in that second inning that uh, brought in Jim Edmonds the pitching matchups when Atlanta comes to town it'll be Mulder and Smoltz on Friday night we'll have that game here on FSN then Marquis and Hudson. Saturday that'll be part of the Fox Saturday game of the week and then Jorge Sosa seven and one will go against Chris Carpenter Sunday <laughs> call third strike on the outside corner to Gritzelonic and the Cardinals are done here in their half of the fourth that's four K's on the night for Josh Beckett Cardinals trailing the Marlins three to two good game going on here and coming up on the Midwest Sports Report we will have a complete Post game wrap up the Cardinals and Marlins, including Tony LaRusso's live comments and your phone calls. It was a busy day in sports. The Blues with a big time trade as they send off their star defenseman Chris Pronger will have reaction to that. Plus, we head back out to Rams camp. What will Robert Thomas's role be? All that and more coming up on the Midwest Sports Report. Dan, big day in the world of hockey for the Blues. Yeah, Chris Pronger, our buddy, the former captain, on his way to Edmonton, and he signed a long term extension with the Oilers and there's Jamal Mayers he'll be with St. Louis this year and we've got Blues hockey on FSN back this winter Chris Carpenter was a, a guy that was a terrific hockey player in high school three times he was all state from New Hampshire I see a lot of pitchers or baseball players come out of New Hampshire do you not at all. I know Jim Edmonds has turned into a huge hockey fan as he made the move to St. Louis in 2000. Larry Walker. It's understandable. Larry Walker from Canada. And Larry grew up with the aspirations of uh, being the next great goaltender. He made a pretty good living out of baseball, I'd have to say, though. Lead off walk to Castillo. 
already his second of of the game and more than his tops in the in the National League walking 1.4 per nine innings so two walks seven hits and yet he's in a battle one ball no strikes Jeff Conine is and Morris has lost his control a little bit in these first two hitters he's just trying to hit his spots and there it is Trying to get a little bit more on the corners, but when you start picking, you usually fall behind on the count, and then you get hurt. Little ground ball, Nunez only plays to go to first. Runner advances to second. That's Castillo. And a chance for the Marlins to add to their 3 2 lead with Cabrera digging in. Cabrera got an RBI single his first time up and then get into an unusual double play. Line drive to Grizzolonic and then doubled off Conine at first base. But Cardinals have done a pretty good job of containing this very, very potent bat. Three for ten in the series, but really not much damage. Runner at second and a chance for Cabrera. Outfield is deep. First pitch is popped up right side. Pujols will give it a look. That's going to find the seats out of play and a souvenir. We talked about the crowds have just been amazing. Final season here at Bush Stadium. Cardinals with a lead of nine games in the Central. And with this crowd tonight, that's 16 straight home dates in which this franchise has drawn over 40,000 fans to these games. Uh, I'm trying to tell people to order your tickets right now because, you know, we get a list of how many tickets are sold for the future games, and it's unbelievable on a nightly basis how they'll jump up by a couple thousand. So, no matter what series it is, there are tickets available, but. You better get them as quick as possible. And if you're wondering, Sunday, October 2nd, it's sold out. <laughs> 50,000 plus. Day before, already 45,000. Final weekend against the Reds, September 30th, October 1st and 2nd. The Cardinals are in the process right now of notifying I mean it's it's close to 140 former Cardinal players about coming in for that weekend the final game on, on Sunday ground ball to Nunez looks back the runner over to pool holes for out number two well tomorrow the Cardinal series will conclude against the Marlins Jeff Supon takes to the mound against AJ Burnett Cardinals tonight at 6.30, 7 o'clock with the play-by-play. -play. And now it's Paul LaDuca. LaDuca has walked back in the third and singled in the first. Pitch in the dirt. Mahoney keeps it in front just enough as Castillo goes back to second. Laduca, an interesting story. A 25th round pick by the Dodgers out of Arizona State. We talked about the fact he's not a big guy, only 5'10. Made it to the majors at an advanced age. You know, after seeing Piazza hit all those home runs. See why he was buried yeah. in their minor league system. A small catcher with not much power wasn't going to do a lot for you, but he is a very good catcher and a very good hitter. He's put up 300 seasons. That's right. And I was shocked when they got rid of him at the trading deadline. Here comes a 1 1 pitch. Old foul. Another hanger up there, but his eyes lit up way out in front. Leduca, Encarnacion, and Moda. 
All came from yeah. Los Angeles to Florida for Brad Penny, and he shot Joy. He almost picked off Cabrera. We had to skip out of the way of that foul ball going into the dugout. Then you got to worry about the the carom off the seat or the or the back wall. And this one is lifted over Eckstein, just enough to flank the run, and it's four to two. Lead off walk comes around to score, and that's Castillo, and it's a two-out base hit RBI by Laduca. Third time he has been on base, and he's two for two. Just enough to muscle it over the head of it. Eckstein on the infield, try to come in on him. Breaking ball on the inside, that's kind of a tough pitch because you bail out on it. When your hips clear, you get a lot of hitting surface. Juan Encarnacion with two outs and a runner at first as we play here in the fifth, 4 2 Florida. Duca almost just took off on Matt Morris, but then he got scared because he thought he timed his delivery. He started to take off the first base, but Matt didn't pay attention to him. Watch him take off, and then he goes, wait a minute. He's still holding the ball. One ball, one strike. Two pitches thrown. And it's a ball in the dirt. And Laduca stays at first. And with two odds. Count is two balls and a strike on Encarnacion. It's been a struggle tonight from the get go for Morris. He averages six and a third innings with those 92 plus pitches. But a couple walks, a lot more base hits than. On average, and as you said, he just hadn't been sharp, but he's still battling and still has his team in a position to come from behind. 2 1 pitch. Howled straight back. Encarnacion with 15 home runs this year. Saw him with Cincinnati and then Los Angeles. His name was one of the names that you heard at the trade deadline that could be on the move. The Marlins hung on to him. They hung on to Burnett and Mike Roll, and it might be better for it. Curveball reaches for it. Nunez over to Pujols. Florida strands a runner. Their fifth of the night, but they add to their lead. 4-2, Florida on top. Has got all three assists in the last inning, the fifth inning, and you see right there, no matter infielder, outfielder, every time they feel a ball, they pick up that ball, and they immediately go to the four seam grip and what that does is when they let it loose it's as straight as an arrow there's no attempt to sail or anything like that you stay on top of it you don't get underneath it to where to sail on you but it's that four seam grip is the truest that every infielder and outfielder just you just throw them a ball and they'll automatically they will grab it with that four seam grip so they can get unloaded with the perfect throw. Here's Nunez. He'll lead it off for the Cardinals. Down by the score, four to two. Nunez, Mahoney, and Morris. Bottom of the order for St. Louis. Cardinals, as I mentioned before, begin playing nine games up in the Central Division. Houston at Arizona tonight. Roger Clemens improved to ten and four last night. Stasio will get the start for the Astros this evening. The 1 1 pitch. Abraham pops it up. Ball is slicing. Cabrera is going to get there. He makes the catch. Cardinal baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Jack invites you to come in and experience Chipata. It's all about the bread. By your local Chrysler Jeep dealers. And by U.S. Cellular. U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. Cardinals were one for their last ten against 
Josh Beckett. That was the home run by Eckstein. And he's retired six in a row since that long ball. It's a good play out there by Cabrera. A bunt laid down by Mahoney, but right back at Beckett. He throws a bullet to first. And there's quickly two outs. It's 4 to 2 Florida as we play here in the bottom of the fifth. And the batter will be Matt Morris, who has a word or two with our home plate umpire. He has had some disagreements with him all night long concerning the strike zone. So that's seven straight. Retired by Beckett. Facing now his counterpart, Matt Morris. First pitch is a ball outside. Beckett's trying to figure out exactly where that pitch was at. Cardinals have RBIs tonight from Gritzelonic and a home run by David Eckstein. This will be taken by Castillo. And five innings in the books here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Jack McKeon peeling off number 26 tonight here at Bush Stadium. Our Bush Beer countdown out there and right. It's four to two Marlins. Thought Fred Bird might pull away and make him walk. Back to that dugout. What's on tap? Marlins and Cardinals tomorrow at 6.30 here on FSN Midwest. And that will be Jeff Supon and A.J. Burnett. Burnett, 8 and 6. Supon is 10 and 7. It's been a good series so far. Jack McKeon back to the dugout. Oh. Matt Morris back to work, and there's a look at Soup. When he was known as Trader Jack, he probably would have made 26 trades in the time it took him to get out there and pull off the number. And he didn't even want the number. Oh, my goodness. All right, Matt, throw a bunch of zeros, and let's get back to offense. Being disrespectful is there. Fred Bird doesn't fly as well as he used to, holding up the ball game. Normally they can just... Go beyond the wall and we resume play, but not tonight. Got to drive him back. And here we go. Here's Mike Lowell. He'll lead it off, followed by Easley, who's had two long fly balls, and then Josh Beckett. Lowell is 0 for 2. He's flied out and popped out. Average at 241. Outfield is deep and straight away. And another ground ball off of Lowell's bat. Next time. For the first out as we start play here in the sixth. Easley has hit one to the wall in right. And he's hit one over the wall in left. He's 1 for 2. Marlins got 2 in the, the first. 1 in the second. Another in the fifth. Lead it 4 to 2. When do I have to get my money in for my scoreboard? Well, you first have to get a computer. When do then I have to get go my to, bid in? Got to go to bidonbush.com. That's the website. In, in, in the break, can you go there for me, Caddy? Be more than happy to help you out, Al. See what what I have to do. Chopper to David again. This could be a quick inning for Matt Morris with the pitcher coming up. Let's hope so. He, he could use a real quick, efficient frame, and then you know he'll get close as he's chawing with the home plate umpire again. Looks like Matt is calm and the umpire is screaming. Jimmy's yelling. <laughs> we had an interesting exchange from uh, Jim Menmans. Right. Great, great uh, camera personnel here caught uh, an exchange with Jimmy with himself. But we decided for legal reasons we wouldn't air. Another ground ball. Nunez can take his time with the pitcher running. One, two, three inning for Matt Morris here in the sixth. Umpire waiting for Matt Morris. Those two will have a conversation. We'll tell you about it. Shade Company are teaming up to bring the first 20,000 fans, 16 and over, with a paid admission, a specially designed Cardinals tote bag. Don't miss your chance to see the Cardinals take on the Marlins for the last time during the regular season 
here at Bush Stadium. We are on bidonbush.com and just a wide assortment of goodies for you. Al. You can have the tarp. Let's see. Let me find some. Uh, I don't want that killer tarp. A non usable video camera. Some of that great that video equipment. No, I'm just looking at it. Oh. It looks like the. It's non usable. It's been I'm beat up. I'm sure a it bit. works. I want the, How about scoreboard? the tractor. You want the tractor? Um, no. It's a thing of beauty when you see it on this website. I just want to send out a warning. If you've ever seen the Mad Hungarian or ever heard what he could do, don't, don't bid against me. It's not an idle, idle threat. I can't wait to bid against you. How about this crane? You want to put it in the crane? That's that is something more up my alley. Eckstein, who is homer tonight, hits it out to short. I've got a pitching machine for you if you'd like that. No. Arms broke. Now your bar could use a um, concession stand. No? No. Really modern equipment. There's your scoreboard right here. There's the scoreboard. Put that in your basement and fire that baby up. That's not what I want. I want the other one. It could be like the Christmas vacation movie and you plug that thing in on your front lawn and light up the entire neighborhood. It could be the next Chevy Chase out. I already am, man. You, get, you wait till Mike, when Luke Michael says, I want to go see Uncle Al's, you know, uh, scoreboard. No, he wants to see my Christmas display. He wants to see, what's my name? What was Chevy Chase's name? It was the uh, Christmas vacation with the uh, Griswolds. The Griswolds. Come see Griswold in my house. Mr. Griswold working with me tonight up hey, here. I put on my Christmas lights. I do it all myself. I get mail from little from the neighbor kids. And I said, we like your Christmas stuff. It's better every year. Well, that's 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 sweet, Al. You're getting kind of misty eyed over here. You should. You should. So getting, he's the getting misty eyed too. He's looking uh, that brought him to one knee. So he's trying to stretch that quad out what he's trying to do now there are guys you know as advanced as you are in the technology that you bring to the table there are guys that during major league baseball games will wear sunglasses that have an iPod that connects as headphones Manny Ramirez as John Rodriguez strikes out was actually caught one day playing his tunes because it looks like sunglasses out, but he's got the iPod going inside. So I think we could get you something like that, maybe mix it a scoreboard. We could have a heck of a Christmas over at the old Robosky's place. What do you think? You in? Now we're now we're starting to starting to talk my language. Outstanding. Fifth strikeout for Josh Beckett. Rodriguez 0 for 3, and now it's Pujols 0 for 2. The Cardinals have just three hits tonight. I'm back to back. Talking hits or home runs. We don't want back to back strikeouts. I'm at number 30 and number 21. Pujols sitting on 29, 85 RBIs. He's lined into a double play and popped out in foul territory. Caps on to one back in foul. Pitch count for Mr. Beckett, 79. That was the other thing that stood out about Chris Carpenter over 100 pitches thrown and barely over 20 balls. That was unbelievable. Some of the Marlins were saying it was the best pitch game they've had against them all season long. And a couple of the advanced scouts said it was the best that they had seen. And it was one that Chris Carpenter delivered last night. 2 1 pitch is fouled back. 
two and two on pools. We're going to put your bid in during the break for that scoreboard. Full count. That's when you know that uh, those are your shoes. The oh. number five on the back. That's not written in. It comes from the manufacturer. Don't go down that J-Rod row. Ball four. Interesting story with Albert Pujols and why he wears number five when he was initially part of the Major League Club. The Cardinals gave him a different number and it was not number five and uh, Walt Jockety said I'm telling you right now this guy's a pretty special talent let's go single digits with pools and that's why he wears number five here in St. Louis Diaz number four Nunez number three Luna seven Al McRae eight Edmonds has been unhappy from center field with this strike zone. Certainly not happy with that last strike. I thought last night's umpire, Doug Eddings, did a nice job. He had a consistent strike zone all the way through, and he told me something last night. I said, you know, there were a few pitches I thought were high, but he said I call strikes, don't I? I said, yes, you do. He said the last four or five years, as the average game has been about 3.46. His has been, his has been, uh, not uh, 246, 246. His has been like 225. Thankfully, calling strikes. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Edmonds jammed and pops it up. That will be taken by easily, and the Cardinals are done. They have stranded two in this ball game. They trail by two runs. We go to the seventh, top of the order. Some of the sights and sounds of this ball game as we move to the seventh here in St. Louis. And Juan Pierre looks at his strike. No activity in either bullpen as Matt Morris continues to work here in the seventh. Let's give Matt some credit. I mean, this has been a grind for him, but here he is in the seventh inning. And still not a quality start, but you know, a, an effective pitched game. Is being out pitched, but he's battling. And a ground ball hit to Pujols. And that's the first out. He hasn't allowed a. Well, he's allowed what one hit in the fifth. Two hits in the in the third. Pitching in the seventh. Most of damage in the first. Castillo takes a strike from Morris. He scored two runs tonight. He's grounded out to first, walked and scored in the fifth, doubled and scored back in the first. Slaps this one to short. Eckstein has to be quick, and he is. Two down. Jeff Conine with two outs and nobody on. Conine with an RBI tonight. Takes a breaking ball low and away. He's also singled and grounded out to third. Two out. 
2 and 0. Oh. Get out to center. Edmonds on the move. Spins around. Won't get it. One hopper near the 402 sign. And Jeff Conine will trot into second base with a two out stand up double. And Edmonds plays a very shallow outfield. See him out here. And the toughest play for a center fielder, the line drive right at you. It really kind of takes a little time to see if it's going to. How high it'll be, whether it's over your head or not, which side it's going to be to. Initially turned the wrong way, but he had no chance of catching that one on the fly. And when Jim Evans doesn't catch one, you don't even worry about the scoring. You know it's a double. First pitch to Cabrera is a ball. Popped up again. Shallow center field. It's going to be taken by Edmonds this time. Calls off of Grizzolonic and Eckstein. Time to stretch. Dog Grizzolonic. Nunez coming up. Finish. Tonight's merchandise winner in the Hyundai Long Drive Inning Sweepstakes. If the Cardinals hit a home run in the seventh, Ian will qualify for the Hyundai Tucson drawing in September to register. Visit a St. Louis area Hyundai dealer. Cardinals trail in this game, four to two. Well played series so far. A couple of very good games. We had the pitchers duel last night. Game one went to Florida. And tonight they lead four to two. Beckett back to work. Cardinals have a right hander getting loose in the bullpen. Morris isn't due up for five spots as Cal Eldred is getting loose. Matt has gutted through this one and let's hope they can reward him this inning. Oh, he's still the pitcher of record, give him the lead. John Gall tonight is struck out and popped out to first in Jeff Conine. Morris just went over the 100 pitch mark at 101. It's another big game for the Marlins because Cincinnati has beaten Atlanta 8 to 5. Pittsburgh over San Diego 9 to 8. He's going to win out west. Huh. And the Padres score eight runs and lose. At times I thought it'd be Padres because of their pitching. But the ground ball to Easley. Goes on the run for the first out. That's where I was going. I thought San Diego was clearly the team to beat in that division because they're pitching. They started play tonight with a one game lead over Arizona. And we mentioned before they'll play Houston. So they have a chance with a win to be tied up at first. Now look at it this way. You've had just a miserable stretch and they're still in first place. So maybe this is their bad stretch. They'll start playing good baseball afterwards and hold on. There's Mark Ritzelonic. He looks at a ball outside. RBI single back in the second to plate Edmonds who doubled off of Josh Beckett. The Cardinals have just three hits tonight. And that's all. Los Angeles at 48 and 58. Ten games below 500. Four games out. What if San Francisco can make a run? They're only six and a half games out. St. Louis a nine game lead. Atlanta with that loss could be down to five and a half if Florida could hold on tonight. Washington leading their ball game three to one that's late. So the Nationals could be within four and a half and that's against the Dodgers so they lose that. Ultimate Cardinals crazy fan. We're looking for fans whose devotion is so complete it's borderline crazy. To listen to Al and Cornbread tomorrow on 92.3 WIL or go to foxsports.com, the keyword Midwest. 
The Mad Hungarian and Cornbread tomorrow on 92-3 the bowl. It's going to be a battle too. I've got some surprises for the Cornbread. You better not make me mad. A check swing and they're going to say that Grit Solonic either went around or fouled it. Went off the catcher's catcher's glove and he's asking the home plate umpire to try to get some help from the first base umpire. Why not? Now he's not challenging him like that. He's probably not going to ask. And in years past, if you ever had a situation like this, whether the first or third base umpire saw it, they would normally just, uh, you know, they would normally just not reverse it. And a curveball is pulled foul. Tony LaRusse, as we saw last night, was about as animated as he gets on two pitches that were up near Edmonds' head and Rodriguez as well. He was screaming at Paul LaDuca. Fires today will do everything they can to get the play correct. But still, you have to ask the others for help. Here's a 2 2 pitch to Gretelonic. Pulls it left side, and the Cardinals have their fourth hit of the evening. A base hit between Easley and Mike Lowell into left field. And now the tying run comes to the plate, and Abraham Nunez. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC. We mentioned that Cal Eldred is getting loose for St. Louis. No activity for the Marlins in their bullpen. So the batter will be Nunez. Well, if Tony doesn't get a reliever up this early unless he's already committed to making a change. Nunez with a career high five home runs this year. Just a fun player to watch. Four of them are from the left side of the plate. And 24 of his 28 RBIs while batting left handed and a 321 average coming in. 43,111 tonight. Last night another sold out crowd here at Bush Stadium. And we probably will not see a crowd under 40,000 for the remainder of the season. There's a couple of games that at this point are below 40, but as we head towards the final game, you know it's going to fill up. Two and one. Activity starting in the Marlins bullpen now. Alfonseca. And I think Malone again. It'll be the third consecutive night he's been used if he comes in. The 2 1 pitch. And he had pitched in 52 games with Seattle before pitching in Monday and Tuesday since joining the, uh, the Marlins. But he's that type of left handed workhorse. You got a winner to rest, Dan. Here's a 3 1 pitch to Nunez. Outside. So after he got a ground ball by John Gall to short, it was a base hit by Gritzelonic, a walk to Nunez. And the Cardinals will pull back Mahoney, and one of their top pinch hitters this year in clutch situations has been John Mabry. He'll be called upon in this spot with one out and runners at first and second. Cardinals must do some damage here in this inning. You can't take the lead or you can't tie it up. And hopefully you can put another run or two up on the board. And now this might be a spot where John Mabry somewhat of a free swinger off the bench and with Josh Beckett trying to maybe get ahead grooves one and gives Mabry a good chance to go hacking and now Jack McKeon may counter here with Malone the lefty. Long walk from their dugout. Uh, I'm, now we understand why Fred Bird picked him up. Because he'd still be coming back. He would have been delayed an hour and 15 minutes <laughs> coming back from break, waiting for Jack to take down the number. So you're saying he's the human rain delay? Well, that's Mike Hargrove. Right, right. That's his nickname. That was when his 
batting style. It took so much time before he'd step in, and they're going to go get Malone for the third straight night. So that's it for Beckett. 4 2 Florida here in the seventh. On your new cell phone from Marsha Wireless can get in game alerts, scores, breaking news, and more on your mobile phone for $3.99 a month. Text the word cards to 65246 or MLBGO, and charges will appear on your mobile phone bill. This could be very interesting as if Malone comes in, you see the numbers before and after the trade, and the fact that he was the man now that was on the mound and that uh, had those two pitches get away from him to both Edmonds and Rodriguez. And now Tony will counter and pinch hit for the pinch hitter with Taguchi. But Malone last night, every time there was a left-hander, the ball took off up and in, and we couldn't figure out why Jim was bunting anyway, but then he nicked. Rodriguez on the hand and got quite an argument from Tony La Russa saying if you're going to throw up there or you want to pitch inside you better get the ball down that's what he the bone of his contention was is get the ball down Beckett can only watch so Taguchi just two for 18 as a pinch hitter this year does have a couple of RBIs and the fastball is outside at 86 miles an hour. Saw that pitch right there would have been another yeah. one of those pitches if it was a left handed batter. So it's not intentional. It's just he's probably dominant on that side of the plate. And a lot of pitches will go up and in to a right hander that same spot away. Josh Beckett allowed four hits and six in the third. So to Gucci in a deep left field off the bench and the car. St. Louis. How about that? So Taguchi. His sixth home run of the season. A three run shot now with 29 RBIs. Every now and then, So just turns on a ball, and there's a big story being done on So Taguchi for Japanese television, and that's the best part of the story. That's the second best part, the curtain call. Huge hit by Taguchi, and now it's a 5-4 St. Louis lead. And now Diaz will hit for Matt Morris, who's the pitcher of record, thanks to So Taguchi. He has a chance for his uh, 12th victory. And this crowd is a buzz. Beckett, he is not the pitcher of record. Ballone, who threw the three run home run ball, is. Right. Pitch out in a way to Einar Diaz. So those two runs. Two of the three charged to Josh Beckett. And Malone gives up his first run as a Florida Marlin. Beckett. His reaction. Uh oh. Pitch low and in to. Diaz and it's two balls and one strike. Now you've got it set up to where you can go with the Tavares in the eighth and Isringhausen hopefully in the ninth. As Diaz grounds it to the second baseman, Castillo. We look ahead to the eighth. It'll be Laduca, Encarnacion, and Mike Lowell coming up for Florida. Cardinal Baseball, a production of Bud Sports and an exclusive presentation of FSN Midwest. Go back out of that home run that Sotaguchi had a year ago off of Kyle Farnsworth, who's now back in the National League. We'll see him this weekend with Atlanta after the trade from Detroit. But he's had some big, big hits. Absolutely. He's done a good job. And on a night where Albert is hitless, it's the spare parts that continue to keep on keeping this team afloat. Remember, Chiguchi is hitting 360 with runners in scoring position. 
That's uh, tops among teams bench players. David Eckstein went deep in this game. Strike on the outside corner. Nothing into the count. David with his fourth home run back in the third. And he's one for three tonight. Count of no balls and two strikes. So Taguchi has sent this crowd into a frenzy here at Bush. And thanks to So Taguchi, Ian Ferguson is tonight's merchandise winner in the Hyundai Long Drive Inning Sweepstakes. And Ian says thank you, So. Yeah, so another entry. One two pitch fouled back. Get a key at the end of the season and get a chance to open up a door of their brand new car. Taguchi, the pinch hitter for the pinch hitter, Mabry, who was announced, and then Taguchi, after Mabry was pulled back, hits the three run homer. Eckstein lines it into right center field. Multi hit game for David Eckstein. It's his 32nd multi hit game and not a bad pitch. Really goes down. You see how he concentrates on the point of contact. Not away from him, went to the opposite field. But to Gucci, I have a feeling that's one of going to be one of those games where you remember, look back and say, remember the free run pinch hit home run that Taguchi hit? And you can also say Jack McKeon may have gone to the well one too many times. He's got three left handers, including Balone out in that bullpen. And we've seen De Los Santos in this series, but we haven't seen Vargas. Two odds. Here's John Rodriguez. Rodriguez tonight with a strikeout, reached on an error by the shortstop Damian Easley, and also grounded out to second base. Average at 3.33. It's been intentionally walked in this series. Slugging percentage over 600 for John Rodriguez. Great jump. Hit up the middle. That's a base hit. A great jump by David Eckstein. As he read it perfectly against the pitcher below. And Rodriguez, his first base hit. And it's runners at first and third. Nowhere to put Albert Pujols. You can you can put him on and walk him. An open base just happened to be second. But Malone tried a different look and a base hit. You know, Rodriguez has got quite a few of his hits against left-handed pitching. And there's another good example where he doesn't give in. He's four for ten off a of left-handed pitcher when he sends Eckstein over to third, and that's it for Malone. So McKeon will go to his bullpen for the second time in this inning. Malone gave up the three-run shot. Stay on sure. Some of this crowd will head there and get a little ice cream, a St. Louis tradition. And now it's Albert Pujols with runners at first and third against Alfonseca. Alfonseca started out as their closer to begin a year, and then he had a stress fracture of his right elbow just coming back, and very good setup man now. And Pujols takes the ball low and away. This is the eighth man to come to the plate. And the Cardinals half of the seventh. So Taguchi's three run home run off the bench. The big blow in this inning, the big blow in this game. He's two for nine against the Marlins right hander. Two and oh. Albert hitless on the night, but his teammates have been doing some yeoman's work tonight. They've got five runs on their seven hits. Oh. Vicious cut by Pujols. Foul tip. Runners at first and third with two down and a two balls and one strike count. Tony Larissa commenting to me before the game saying just shocked that this Marlins team hasn't won more. He talked about how good they are. So the Cardinals with their walking wounded can and the reserves can win this game be something. Three and one on Albert with Edmonds on deck. Cardinals have been finding any kind of way to win games squeeze plays to Gucci off the bench whatever the case may be and we hope that home run holds up as the outfield is deep for pools and Albert 
fouls it. Well, you know, because of having four of your regulars out and a big part of your offense, you're going to have to manufacture more runs. So we've seen small ball, but right now is one of the times you can just lay back and rip. Five home runs with a full count, a 295 average. You think you're going to get a pitch to hit. You might anticipate the average in the home runs being a little higher. Runner from first is off and running. That's Rodriguez. And it, again, another foul ball off the bat of Pujols. A lot of times with this 3 2 count, you look for a breaking ball because there is going to be first base open with the runner running. And you try and trick some hitter who thinks he's going to get a fastball. But they ran the fastball in the first, that pitch. Another fastball in trying to challenge him. Here's a 3 2. And it's ball four. And it gets away. That's not is safe and that ball gets away who holds on his way to second base and Rodriguez advances all the way from first to third and the Cardinals have a two run lead a wild pitch by Alfonseca Eckstein scores the run and the Cardinals have picked up four runs here in the bottom of the seventh and ball in the dirt. Eckstein very alertly comes here. Alfonseca late in covering, and the ball goes off and looked like Eckstein. So Rodriguez picks it up as it goes back to the screen again. He goes over to third. Dave McKay, the first base coach, was waving wildly to Pujols as he's coming down the first baseline to not stop at first, go to second base. He does so, and now with first base open, they're going to walk Edmonds, but. And now they're scoring opportunity with two outs. High delivery that time by Alfon Seca. It'll be John Gall for the second time in this inning here in the seventh. He started the inning with a ground ball out to short. So an intentional pass to Jim Edmonds. Marlins have walked three in this inning, including this one here to Jimmy. And St. Louis has picked up three base hits, including the three-run homer. Houston hasn't started their game but you know they're glue and watching this and when you can post a win before their game starts they know they must win to keep pace and the Cubs are tied in the ninth inning at Philadelphia 3 3. Base is loaded. And into Gall and almost hit him. Ninth man to come to bat this inning. Let's get it no, back to uh, tenth Taguchi. Man. Yeah. <laughs> 1 0 pitch to John Gall and a broken bat. 1 and 1. Inning started with a ground ball out by Gall to short. And then Grigelonic is single. A walk to Nunez. And then the big blow in this game, the three run homer off the bench by Sotoguchi off of Ron Vallone. Then it was Diaz as a pinch hitter for Morris, who is now the pitcher of record for the Cardinals. He's got a chance at a victory tonight. Then we went back to the top of the order. And the Cardinals have made this interesting as Lowell will take this, the easy one, to second base. Joe Deguchi as we go to break. A nice round of applause by these fans, and he sent them into a frenzy with his three run homer. He's staying in the ball game to play right field after his huge hit tonight. The three run pinch hit home run, Julian Tavares, and this sets up beautifully for St. Louis to get Tavares in the eighth, Isringhausen in the ninth. But as of late, it hasn't been easy out for Julian. Uh, but he and Marty Mason worked out things last night's ball game down the in the pen. But you know, you get involved in a game like this, you get caught up in you know the atmosphere surrounding here in the ballpark. Lowell Conine talking with Beckett right there, trying to figure out what happened. But what happened was Matt Morris was good enough to just to keep on battling. First perseveres through seven innings and he's the pitcher of record. 
This damn sports show period, the greatest nightly sports show on television with host Chris Rose and co-host John Sally. Rob Dibble and Rodney Pete tonight. Their guest will be the one and only future Hall of Famer Marshall Falk of the St. Louis Rams coming up tonight on the best damn sports show period. Tavares will face LaDuca, Incarnacion, and Mike Lowell. St. Louis on top, 6-4. Einar Diaz stays in the ball game. Rodriguez moves from right to left. Leduc is two for two with a walk tonight. Shows bunt, looks at a strike. And Julian has 23 holds, second most in the National League. And he's induced 10 double play balls. That's tied for second in the majors. He's a reliever. And this one has popped up on the infield. Albert is going to take it. Foul territory, Brown number one. How about the last double play that we saw Tavares get? That was the diving stop and one of the best DPs of the year. Started by Nunez and then to Pujols and then back to Abraham at third. Yeah. Nunez has just done a phenomenal job over there, but these players, when you play in this atmosphere, Cardinal fans how vocal they are and just how supportive they are everybody's on their toes everyone makes good plays and a game like this everyone steps it up a notch. Incarnacion the hitter strike one from Julian. Cardinals have Ray King getting loose in the bullpen. Right hander getting loose for Florida. Good pitch. Well, they took some off that off speed delivery. He throws a change up and he also throws a splitter. Mentioned earlier that Matt Morris has never lost three consecutive games in his nine year career, and that's our Hardy's hot pitch, and it won't happen here tonight. Great arm action on that off speed pitch there. It just kind of floats up there and got our way out in front. 0 oh, 2 drops down, and it's low and inside, 1 and 2. Matt Morris continues that trend of great pitching here at Bush Stadium. And, you know, he battled in, in early innings. You wonder how long he'd be out there, but he went through seven and in line for his 12th victory. The time is called. Empire is showing everyone what the count is. Tavares, a former Marlin. One two pitch. Hit out to right, so is there. Hard hit ball, and Taguchi got another good jump out there. You don't see him take many false steps or bad jumps. No, you don't. He's just fun to watch him play all aspects of the game, and as we said, just how much fun is it to see how he has developed as a true major leaguer. Four year playing time, he's learned a lot. Amazing. And doing it. At this level, is Mike Lowell, 0 for 3 and uh, 1 for 9 in the series. Fastball and a strike. A little help from our home plate umpire on that first strike to Lowell. He didn't like it. Both sides have had equal amount of complaints. Matt Morris got it through his innings and bottom line he's got a chance to win this game without his best stuff tonight. It's all about this level is wins no matter how you get them. And a 1 1 pitch. From Julian ground ball to short a 1 2 3 eighth inning for Tobias good work by Julian. Cardinals coming up in their half, up by two runs. Game recap is brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of baseball. A lot of hitting for the Cardinals, but that's the biggest blow. A three-run, pinch hit, home run to give the Cardinals their first lead of the night. They go on to score another run and take a 6-4 lead. And Taguchi is the hero. He is a man of higher standards for that three 
run pinch hit home run the seventh Cardinals this season are 58 and four when leading after seven innings an effective eighth inning by Tavares Lenny Harris the all time pinch leader with 205 is now playing third base and Mota Guillermo Mota will come in and appear for his 40th time he has one win and three decisions nine holds an ERA over four. 37 and 18 so about a two to one strikeout to walk ratio. And Mota was a big part uh, excellent setup man for the Dodgers before coming over the Duca and that Brad Penny trade. Taguchi is the man of honor right now. But Zelonik will lead it off. The Cardinals have been out hit in this game, but they lead it by two runs. And after watching Lenny Harris run on that uh, bases loaded double, why not think about trying to push a bunt down towards him? Talk to Lenny. remember in game one. I talked to Lenny about uh, you know, he's got a bad hamstring or quad. And I said, well, you know, why didn't they pinch it, uh, pinch run for you? He goes, oh, they never do. But now they got him out there playing third. It's a lot of pass Lenny Harris. That's why get down butt. the left field line. Get two. He's thinking two. The throw in is not in time. Lead off double for the Cardinals second baseman. And a three hit night for Gritzelonic. Well Harris was playing in and Mark scorched it right by him. It's like better 340 since the break. Is that his 12th game with three hits or more? So a one legged, you know, pinch hit wonder comes in to play third and they pick on him with the first shot. Now he'll play in guard against the bunt with Nunez up. Nunez walked and scored back in that big seventh inning in which the Cardinals got four runs to take their first lead tonight. Didn't show bunt, takes a ball. You got a two run lead and a man in scoring position you really don't have to. But you entrust in the fact that you feel that hitting from this side of the plate you could be able to pull the ball too. Yeah pull the ball and get him over to third base but also you know Tony he can switch off every pitch. Like that. So he shows it up not showing it on the first pitch showing it on the second pitch third pitch could be something totally different. And with Lenny Harris with that sore leg, if he comes in far enough in on the grass with a good lead by Grizzlonic, would he be able to get back to cover third base on a steal? Up the middle. the middle. That's a base hit. Grizzlonic will score easily on the RBI by Abraham Nunez. Seven to four, Cardinals. A shortstop out here as the pitch is being made he goes over to the hole and guaranteeing that he would never have a chance to get that ball up the middle and not to pick on Juan Pierre again but if that ball gets to center field there's no way he could throw out Grizzolani and does a nice job to get on top of that ball and hit down on it and get a ground ball and the bonus of it going through in an RBI. There's to bring no up hesitation whatsoever with Grizzolani. No and Jose Okendo knowing the arm strength of Juan Pierre out there wouldn't even allow him to slow down. Hustling him all the way and another run. Here's so Taguchi a pitch out and ball one. Taguchi a nice round of applause from the folks here at Bush Stadium as he was introduced. First time up off the bench a three run home run to give the Cardinals a 5 4 lead. They since have added two more. Not only is Taguchi respected but just flat out liked by all of his teammates. The situation here too Al that uh, you've got a guy like Taguchi that delivers with a home run off the bench and he could bunt right here. Well I, I wouldn't even mind a, a hit and run. You know, he's good at hitting behind runners. You got Moda who's slow to the plate so Nunez should be able to get a pretty good jump. Don't nine holding him on so more hitting him on the right side. They already got a three run lead. Without Sanders, without Walker, without Roland, the Cardinals have to do a little bit more small ball and manufacturing runs. 
not as much station to station. And not to say that they were like that before, but it's been more pronounced now. Yeah, I mean, and, and Tony Russo will tell you, this is the way we will have to play. But it's also very good for the psyche of the ball club to know that you can win, you can manufacture and score runs without the big guys. That you don't have to just say, put it on the shoulders of one of two guys. And nobody feels better in that clubhouse when you got nine guys that were able to compete offensively defensively they're very good you can help you out that way but it's a team effort total team to Gucci down the right field line that'll slice out a play foul so most of the time he thinks about hitting the ball the opposite field and every now and then when somebody makes a mistake he has that ability to turn on that pitch so Taguchi was telling me he had a chance to go back to Japan for a lot more money, but he wanted to play in his mind with the best in the world right here in the United States in Major League Baseball. Felt he wanted the challenge. Runners going. It's behind the runner, so they avoid what could have been possibly a double play on a slow hit ball. It would have been tough to turn to, but regardless, Nunez winds up at second base in scoring position and a chance for Diaz. Thought they may try the hit and run with that combination made a lot of sense but fundamentally to Gucci very sound you got a pitcher that's slow to the plate you got a guy that makes solid contact part of the equation on on a, putting on the double play is you don't want to strike out victim at the plate and a guy that's willing to give himself up. So in, in essence he did give himself up got the runner over but didn't do it the conventional way through sacrifice. Diaz was a pinch hitter for Morris back in the seventh stayed in the game grounded out to the second baseman. Fastball at 91 miles an hour upstairs. Averages dipped to 205 limited playing time all season long for Einar. Another player that understands that he is not an everyday player, even though Molina, the everyday catcher, is hurt, willing to share time and understand the predicament and keep a smiling face. Check swing. Heel down to first, the ball, two and one as you get a look at Molina. Slowly but surely making progress. Yeah, more activity today, more catching drills and things. And feeling better day by day. Diaz down the left field line. Well hit off the top of the wall. Nunez can just walk on home. And it's eight to four St. Louis. Einar Diaz gets in the act. Now Diaz at times like this, especially when he's already had one at bat, and you know, he's going to respond. Okendo waving. Not very enthusiastic because he knew he didn't have to <laughs> get the attention of his base runner and just uh, you don't see me windmilling it so take it easy don't hurt pull a muscle. So four runs in the seventh two added on here in the eighth and it's now a four run lead for the Cardinals. Isringhausen was up and throwing. Wouldn't be the worst thing to have him pitch. He hadn't pitched since Sunday. As Eckstein pulls it foul. But Tony La Russa back in the seventh elected to go with John Mabry. Don't forget about that. And with the lefty coming up it was Jack McKeon going to his bullpen. And that was Valone and his third day of work. Tony La Russa counters with Sotoguchi and he delivers the biggest hit in this game. Next time. Just a bit foul. Ray King who had warmed up in the eighth inning in case Tavares Got a couple guys on. He will get the shot. He will start the ninth inning. You know, Randy Flores hasn't pitched for a while. And since Thursday in San Diego. 
Ray King last pitched Sunday in L.A. Third of an inning. Three more hits in this inning. The Cardinals have now out hit the Marlins 10 9 a lead of eight to four. Two and two. Marlins came in with the highest batting average in the National League at 278. Cardinals were add to their 270 average with their 10 hits. Next Stein is Homer tonight. This big crowd has enjoyed it here tonight. Crowd of 43,111. Envy of every team where you see these 40,000 plus Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday crowds, and it will continue all season long. Next Stein calls time. Two balls, two strikes. Bunch of finals in now as Milwaukee, Milwaukee beats New York six to four. Cincinnati yeah. beat Atlanta eight to five. Just talking about the one we want to show. Philadelphia over Chicago. Little blue pit by David Eckstein. He's taking extra bases. He's picked up the RBI. And for the Cardinals, it's their third double here in their half of the eight. They're pouring it on. Well, how how much of a windmill was Okindo on this one? A little more until he sees that it's easy. So Diaz chugging along as the Cardinals scored nine tonight. 549 runs on the season. Three hits for Eckstein. A couple RBIs. He's already scored two runs. Cardinals three doubles and four hits in this inning. Now, don't forget the fact that uh, Josh Beckett was very good tonight. Six and a third. And he gave up just four hits. Pitching into the seventh. Well, this team can, good pitching can stop the Cardinals. But if you get into middle relief and it's not their day, the Cardinals hitters can have a field day. Got eight hits in the last two innings. Cardinals did have some news today. They signed two players to minor league contracts, and one of those, Armando Almanza. You might remember him. He was part of the Renteria deal, so now he's back at Triple A Memphis, and we saw him pitch earlier this season as Rodriguez swings and misses, and making a start tonight at Double A Springfield. Old buddy Alan Bennis. Yeah, that's great news. Moda's pitching to the Cardinals' current minor league player of the month. He won that award in about half a month. And his, numbers, and and his numbers were unbelievable. Rodriguez batted 375 with eight home runs and 24 RBIs in 14 July games for Memphis. I think that contract was purchased on July 18th and he hasn't stopped hitting. Been on base twice. Reached on an air, single back in the seventh. Rodriguez strikes out on a changeup. Two outs and it brings in Pujols. How many times you get 11 hits and nine runs and, and Albert is hitless. Does have a pair of walks. Didn't even have a run scored today. Strike one to Albert. Two for nine in the series. 0 for two tonight. Edmonds on deck. If Pujols can extend it. He said last night Chris Carpenter had not hit anybody, and then all of a sudden, boom, he plunks a man. Then tonight, Albert looking for that first hit. So let's see if uh, you can help him out here. Uh, I think the odds are a little, a little <laughs> better for me with Albert swinging. I think so. Hitting 3.41 on the year. 
And the ball gets away. You realize you made the Marshall Wireless call of the game? Yes, I did. On the pregame show. Wild pitch, and next time, very alertly, paying attention out there, scoots up. He was going to score on any base hit from second base, but even greater chance now. One and two, the count on Pools. Albert gets underneath this one. Cabrera coming on, and he'll make the catch. Cardinals add three more in this inning. It's 9 for St. Louis as we head to the ninth. Gucci, a huge night off the bench for the Cardinals. 9 for St. Louis, top of the ninth. Cardinals at uh, one point had Jason Isringhausen throwing in the bullpen and getting loose, anticipating a safe situation, but because now with a five run lead, no safe situation, Tavares stays in. Ray King continues to throw. And easily first batter, and then Lenny Harris, a left handed hitting specialist. He's the third baseman, but be his first plate appearance. Easily one for three tonight with a home run. First pitch of ball. Matt Morris of the Cardinals hold on, becomes a 12 game winner. Cardinals tomorrow as they'll try to make it three or four against Florida. Hopefully we'll send Jeff Supon against A.J. Burnett. Burnett is eight and six. Supon is ten and seven. Struckman trying to speed this game up a little bit. And here comes a one one pitch. Down by five runs here in the night, trying to run his way on. I guess you need base runners, but curious play. One and two, the count. We have seen Nunez field. As a Cardinal fan, you'd say, go ahead. Sinker. So his ball's got some life tonight. He got it. Strikeout for Tavares. Midwest Sports Report is coming up. We're going to get a preview from Brent Stover in a little bit as Tony LaRusso trots out to the mound. Ray King will get some work in this 9 4 ball game. We'll step aside with St. Louis on top. Boys. Mentioned that the Midwest Sports Report is coming up. Let's check in and get a preview with Brent Stover who's standing by. Coming up on MSR, complete postgame coverage, including Tony LaRusso live and your phone calls at 1 888 Ring Fox, plus much more on the Chris Pronger trade. That and more right after the game, but now back to Dan and Al, guys. Well, the Cardinals are two outs away from victory number 68, and Ray King is going to get us there. This will be his 53rd appearance. 53rd, and he wants to erase the memory of his last appearance where he his first blown save of the season, allowing a three run home run and Sonny's extra inning win. Here's Chris Aguilia. Hit into center, Edmonds going out. Jimmy dies, and he came up with it again. What a play. Tremendous from the gold glover. 
Wow. Up by five runs. It doesn't matter with this guy. Another great play by Jim Edmonds. Can be better than this. Wow. I mean, the concentration, you got a big lead. Nobody on base, but the concentration is right there as he just dives up and out and tracks it all the way, but gets as far as he can go before he realizes he must dive and right at the apex and hits that ground hard, but holds on. And another highlight play for Jim Edmonds. He's just awesome, isn't he? Wow. Fun to watch. Won a gold glove every year in St. Louis. Seven total, five consecutive years in St. Louis, and look for number eight. That mantle oh. is getting running out of space. And now it's Juan Pierre. Cardinals and out of way. Strike one. Crowd that stuck around gets every second of Cardinal baseball, you get another tree. King trying to finish it off. Through Nunez to Eckstein and no play. Aaron Nunez. Tonight's play of the game is brought to you by Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. And it's Sotoguchi Al in the seventh off the bench delivering the key hit in this game. Down by two, but not for long as the Cardinals get their first lead with that off the bench, pinch hitting for the pinch hitter Mabry with a three run home run. And the Cardinals first lead they go on to pile on but Marlins running out of time. Strike one to Castillo. Man what a play by Edmonds. and warming up in case this game gets extended to a save situation. One ball, one strike. The switch hitting Castillo. Oh, man. Cardinals entered the seventh inning and they were trailing by two runs. I mean, <laughs> all these players are sitting there complaining about the strike zone. Except for Taguchi. Quite pleased. Uh, he's just too polite. 2 1. Upstairs, 3 and 1. Siebel, Gall, Rowan, Mabry. I think these young kids haven't. And learning a wealth of experience in this environment. Here's a 3 1 pitch and a high fly ball out to left. Rodriguez back at the track at the wall and it's gone. Well, all of a sudden, it's 9 6. So one of those runs not earned. After the air by Nunez and a home run for Castillo, his third this season. And he's having trouble locating his pitches. Doesn't need to give up many home runs, and Israel Nazan trying to figure out now he is coming into this game. Not a save situation, but you just don't want to get let this one get away. We step aside, 9-6 St. Louis here in the ninth. Springhausen appears for the 41st time this season. ERA of 1.69. Opponents hitting 2-11 against him. And he'll try to get the final out of this ballgame. Cardinals leading nine to six. Hopefully one pitch. And he will see Jeff Conine. First pitch up and in. Conine tonight two for four. He's got four hits 
in the three games played in this series, and he's 7 for 17 against Izzy. Room in the left center field, the outfield. Not really all that deep. Rodriguez is though in left. Edmonds again somewhat shallow for him. Out in center. One ball, one strike. As Al told you, the Phillies beat Chicago 4 to 3. Good curveball. That's strike two. Ball wants the cutter. And it's a ground ball. Eckstein diving play. Can he end it? You bet. How about the defense to end this ball game? Off the bench, so Taguchi delivers the big hit. And St. Louis picks up victory number 68. Matt Morris is now 12 and 4 on the year. Next Cardinals game tomorrow night at 6:30 on FSN Midwest. The Midwest Sports Report comes your way now.